Hello and welcome back to IT Security Labs and in this video we'll be working on a, another hack the box machine called Sense and this is another video in my series where I'm practicing to actually end up signing up for the OSCP and take the exam and one of the suggested ways was to complete hack the box machines and today we'll be doing an easy one say Linux box and this one is actually exciting so let's go ahead and start exploiting this machine as usual i always start with my nmap scans and by now i have it to a point where i just do i have my commands and i just paste copy and paste and change the ip address and as you can see we're just using the regular saved scripts outputting to a folder called nmap and hit enter and this will just start the normal scan. I've already done this scan for us, same command right here. And as you can see, we have our results. So let me stop this one. Looking at our NMAP scans here, we see that we have port 80 and 443, saying so that's it. So we don't have a lot to work on, but uh, the first thing that we do is, we see that we are running light, light we are running this application here that's always very important to note and we can even copy that and save it somewhere just in case we have to look up the version and from this i know that i need to run uh, i need to brute force the directories on these two locations both on http and https and what i can do is run Go buster. So here's one that I already started. I'll just walk you through the uh, command. I'm running go buster, which is a directory brute forcer, and specifying that I want to brute force directories on this URL right here. Then I'm using a word list, which is um, this one, the list to the directory list 2.3, the medium.txt. And I'm looking for specific extensions. In this case, uh, text. I did run this with the default ones. It checks forever, and the results are not that helpful anyway. And since I'm going for HTTPS here, I'm using the negative K to ignore any SSL errors because you will get errors if you don't have that negative K. And I'm outputting to a directory called DERS. So it's still running right now. But let's go and find out what is in that DERS. So if we, in, in my folder here, if I do an ls, you see that I have DERS. That's where I'm outputting the results. And if I do a less DERS to read what's in there, you see that uh, I did find a few um, directories, most of them being very normal. And the interesting one is the change.txt and the, uh, the other one is system users so let's go ahead and open those opening a new link and open link so that should open these two okay so right away i get this my connection is not secure And this is the change.txt. But before we look at change.txt, let's just look at the normal page that we have here. The HTTP first, 10.10.10.60. Okay, so let's do an advanced. Uh, sometimes you can look at the SSL certificate to see if you can um, see any users or some useful information. So let's just do a view. Um, yeah, there's nothing really here, but sometimes I found that you can see some useful information from this certificate, but we don't have anything there, so we can confirm. And we see PFSense. I do use PFSense in my lab and everything that I do, so this is what I'm running on right now. So I have PFSense and I'm running here. Sometimes when I play around, 
I have Elastic and other things here. So I'm pretty familiar with PFSense and this web interface. I also uh, have a few videos on how to monitor PFSense, creating firewall rules and all that stuff. So I, I was very excited to see that it's actually PFSense. So first thing that I do is just try the admin and I know the default login is PFSense. And of course, I don't expect it to work, but it will be foolish of me to not try that. So I know that uh, admin PFSense is the normal uh, default login page. But we have changed change log to text. So let's just go ahead and uh, log in there. Okay. Security change log. This would be a very sloppy administrator would, would do something like this. <laughs> but anyway, we have two of three vulnerabilities have been patched. So that means we have one vulnerability. So we already know we're going for a PFSense vulnerability. Timeline then, okay, it will be installed next time. All right. And going back to our results here, let's see system users.txt, another sloppy thing to do. Uh, please create the following user why anyone would have this information on the in, on the pfsense is uh beyond me <laughs> but uh, the username is roy hit uh, password company defaults that could mean anything but for me since i know that pfsense is a default password of pfsense it's safe to come and uh, try roy hit and pfsense so let's do roy hit and pfsense see if that works okay it didn't work turns out pfsense is very um sensitive uh case sensitive on the username so if i try raw hit okay so a couple of things to note here this is this is what i ended up doing but i did try to brute force this <laughs> And PFSense will lock you out, will um, blacklist your IP address. And I had to reset the machine. I also realized that um, brute forcing firewalls is probably not the best thing. So, uh, because you do get a ban. But you, uh, IPsec and other people online have uh, another way where you can tunnel your traffic from a blocked machine to a new machine and still continue to do this. So, this is... Um, something that I just learned about uh, while working on this machine. So we're in. First thing that we know right away is that we have this version right here. Let's look up PFSense, that version. Uh, let's just look for exploit. As you can see, we have remote command execution okay and you can com come and read more about this one here but that's an interesting one but let's go back we do know that uh, there's two of three vulnerabilities that needs to be ex uh, two of them were patched and then we have one more left i'll look at all the vulnerabilities okay so we have uh, interesting ones. Maybe this is uh, what's in what's interesting here. Cross-site scripting is another one. But I went with this uh, remote command execution. This one, I can download this, or I can just use search exploit to see if I can find it. So I can stop this because I, I know I know that uh, I already have my directories. And I can do uh, search exploit pfsense. Do I have anything there? Yep. We have a lot. But the one that we are going with, so we're going with this one. And it looks like we already have a Python script here. So this, from here, I know that I have two ways to do this. The, the one way is to exploit using this Python script. And I should be able to get um, shell. Or the second one is I can fire up burp suite 
and burp within burp i can uh, reverse engineer this script and see what they are doing and uh what kind of remote command execution they're doing and still be able to achieve the same results but because um i i, I plan on be working on burp on a series of videos uh for a week in the next few weeks i'm going to reserve that for that but and today let's go ahead and um find this this script here so let's just uh, copy it here so okay we are copying to here uh, okay I need the I need the full location here what am I doing so I'm copying this from this location all the way to here let's see if it works yes now I have my Python script right here so let's do clear let's look at this script the I And let's see what's going on in here. Okay, so this is the remote command execution one on the RR, the graphs. I know what those ones are. And it looks like we just have to set up our host, local host, local port, username and password. That's what we need. This is, uh, these are the arguments that, that are needed here. Okay. Okay, so this is easy. This is easy. So let's um, quit out of there and clear. So let's execute this script and see what happens. So to execute this script, we am just running Python and then specify the name of the script. Remote host is 10.10.10.60. My local host is 10.10.14.33. Local port I'm listening on 1234. Username is Rohit. Our password is pfsense. That's all we need. Then I need to start a listener. Let me uh, stop this. And let's zoom in. So we need a netcat. Negative L, B, and P. 1234. Let's start a listener here. Then once we're listening, let's go back here and execute our script. According to this, this should uh, bring us a, bring us a shell. Okay, took it running exploit. Let's go back here. See, yes. So this is too simple, guys. Uh, if I do an ID, I'm root. That that is that is probably the easiest one. Uh, I like that this is a legitimately reasonable machine. And I like PFSense, so to see that it's easy to exploit, uh, it's kind of disappointing. But at the same time, I want to reserve the uh, Burp Suite version of this for a different video. That will be probably the first Burp video that I create. Otherwise, guys, this was one of the easy ones where you just find an exploit online. Somebody's um, script for it makes your script kitty, but hey, this works. Then next time we'll dissect more into the exploit and see what exactly is happening behind the scenes. But I just want to show you the easy way. Then next we have Burp Suite. That's it guys. Subscribe, like, and I will see you in the next video.